Welcome to the Project Management Coaching Podcast with certified trainer and project management expert, Dan Ryan. Hey, everybody. This is Dan Ryan, and I am coming to you today to present to you my very first podcast ever uh, from the Project Management Coaching Podcast.com. This is my literally my first episode, episode number one, and it is going to be an interview with Felix Hernandez. Felix, why don't you say hello? Hello, everyone. All right, great. So um, sort of very excited about having the, uh, the podcast and uh, this being my first episode. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Dan Ryan, um, PMP certified and PMI ACP certified. And I have been helping people and training and coaching people to pass the PMP exam since 2011. And I have websites at thepmtutor.com as well as thepmexamcoach.com. So at this time, it made a lot of sense for me to be able to you know, open, get a podcast going where I could support my customers throughout their entire PMP journey, all right, including being able to earn PDUs as part of the 60 hours that they have to earn through PMI every three years. So that sort of brings me to where I am today. And this podcast is going to be a big uh, supporting factor for all of my customers, not just to help them before the PMP exam, but to also be able to help them throughout their careers and maintain that relationship, really. So that's where I'm at. So Felix, uh, you uh, were familiar with some of my coaching methodologies. Uh, first of all, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit, a little bit about your background, and uh, then I might ask you some questions about that that PMP journey that you were on. Sure. Sounds great. Well, everyone, like Dan mentioned, my name is Felix Hernandez. And for the past 16 years, I've been focusing my technology career goals in the areas of IT architecture, IT security, enterprise risk management, and project management. Within the past couple of years, I've been a, cert a serial certification taker, and I've been certified in, as a project management professional and information security management, uh, so, excuse me, information security manager. And uh, for the past several years, I've been an independent consultant and speaker. Um, I'm a native New Yorker, but now live in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I consider myself a converted Southerner. Uh, I've been drinking a lot of sweet tea, eating a lot of cornbread, just engaging in the life of the South here. Um, and I've been living here with my beautiful wife and two children, and two children for the past uh, five years. That's awesome. Can you get any good pizza there, though? That's the thing. That's the, that's the uh, thing that I've been looking for. There's a lot of establishments here that say that they uh, sell New York pizza, but it's <laughs> never it's never good enough, you know, from from eating pizza at home. Yeah. Well, two New Yorkers here, one living in New York. That's me. And you live in uh, down south. So thank you so much, Felix, for joining me today. And uh, let's talk a little bit about your journey to take the PMP exam. Set us up with the background a little bit about why you thought taking the PMP was important. Okay. As I was growing in my career, I've, I've been everything in IT, from a help desk technician to a network administrator to a systems manager. And as I was growing throughout my career, I've decided that I needed to get some professional, some professional certifications. I researched a bunch of them out there, and I could have gotten – some from the different vendors that I was dealing with every day, like a Microsoft or a Cisco. But then I came across a website that talked about project management. So I read up on it and decided to take the first step of my journey there. But unknowing to me, it was a lot of information that I needed to learn to become a certified project manager. It required a lot of resources and a lot of time. So. I was in and out of taking, of, of studying for the certification. And then one day I sat myself down and I said, Felix, you have to uh, finish the certification. You have to pass it. So I dusted off the books that I had and continue on in my journey there, but I still struggled. So I, I came to the realization that I needed some help. And that's when I came across 
uh, your website, Dan, and gotten to 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 learn about uh, your, what you have to offer to to aspiring PMPs, and that's when you and I uh, collaborated, and and you started to coach me on the different things that I need to learn about uh, the PMP exam process and tips and tricks to pass it. Yep. And after yep. a couple of uh, uh, months, here I was being certified as a project manager. Okay. All right, but let me so ask that, you, that, that, that's my how, long, how long did you invest in the process before you came to me? The PMP, oh, man, I, on and off, to be honest, it was about a good two years of struggling. Okay. And, and and not because and not because I felt that I wasn't smart enough to take the PMP. I mean, is 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 everything is laid out there. It's just is a is a vast amount of information and and, and it needs to be broken down in, in a way that person that's new to, to, to the certification process uh can handle. Right. So put it into bite sized chunks, have a checklist to follow and make it simple. Right. Your exact plan, the the plan that you laid out across your training program but took me over that hump. That's awesome. So, okay, so you you did the right training, you got through, and then what was it like the day of the test when you went in there? You know, you not that you didn't tell me like the exact questions, but was it like, uh, you know, when you sat down to take the exam on the day, did you feel prepared like you were going to crush it? I felt like I was super prepared. Like I went in, in into the, uh, to the certification exam center, with, with a bunch of confidence because, you know, throughout the sessions that you and I had when you were showing me the different techniques about uh, how to calculate earn value, how to work with the scheduling, uh, how to manage stakeholders, you know, all those tips and tricks that you provided me throughout our coaching sessions. I, I went in there into the, into the exam center, sat down um, with, a, with, with some water and, Every question that came about was okay. I know I, I, I worked with with Dan about that. Um, his checklist. And how did you score? How did you, how did you score on the exam? All proficient. Really? All five yeah, categories. All, all five categories. Yes. yes. Nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. awesome, Felix. So, Felix, now you go back to work. You're a PMP certified. You're experienced guy. You've been in the industry for 10, 15 years. So tell me, when you have this certification and you go back, is it different afterwards? Do you feel like this, you know, what was real, what was not? Like, how would you consider uh, life before versus life after with the new credential? I can give you a perfect example of that. So when I got certified, uh, I am part of the local PMI chapter in Atlanta. So what, before I got certified, I was just sitting in the crowd, you know, just participating in the sessions, getting to know and network with different people. But once I got certified, I entered that room with a, like a, with a confidence. And when people, when, when they give you the name tag, it says Felix Hernandez, but then you get those three letters after your name, PMP. So people will be like, oh, wow, you're a PMP. When did you get certified? What study materials did you use? You know, what projects are you working on? So it, it allowed me to be part of this large community and it made me feel felt real good. And then, as an independent consultant, when I'm working with clients and I pass in my business card and it says that I'm a project uh, management professional, you know, the, the conversation changes because now they're looking at you as yeah. a subject matter expert. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It's true. It's true. It really does change the dynamic about how you're viewed through that lens that people look at you, but. What I'm asking you is, despite despite how you might have had this improved social standing from it, did you find that you were applying things, or that you you know you, during your during your project management work in the weeks or months after you passed the exam, did you notice that you were like, oh wow, I'm doing this now because I'm certified. I wouldn't have done this before. Yes, yes, I had. Uh, in regards to let's say collecting uh, project requirements. Even even with my interactions with the stakeholders, just the the different skill sets that I learned uh, as I was studying for the PMP, I, I was able to apply it in the real real world right off the gate. As That's soon as I enter into a project, all the, the the skill sets that I learned was automatically applied. That's fantastic. That's the part I like to hear because, you know, a lot of people who struggle with this stuff will say. 
uh, oh, it's not real life. But, you know, there are a lot of things that we can use from uh, from that training in, in, in our careers and in our jobs every day. Uh, so let yeah, me ask. What, 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 yeah. One other thing I wanted to add. I'm sorry for cutting you off, sure. uh, Dan. But well, one of the things that I that I actually took away from the training was the importance of the work breakdown structure. I really, I really didn't put emphasis on that prior to uh, becoming a, a, a PMP. Mm. But as we were going through the training, I realized that's an important piece of the whole project uh, management pro uh, uh, phases, is being able to break down all your project activities and put it in some type of program like Microsoft Project or all the other tools that are out there. That's a good takeaway that I took away from the from the training. Sure. Also, yeah, you know, I hear a lot of co collecting the requirements, and I hear about the work breakdown structure. Also, yeah, that's awesome. That's good feedback. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's change gears now. Tell me, um, in terms of uh, the information security industry as an industry, uh, which is which is your expertise. You know, for the people who are aspiring out there as PMPs or, you know, soon to be PMPs and what can you can you give us the, a little bit of an understanding about, you know, what is the information security industry in a way that regular people can understand? OK, uh, well, before I answer that question, there's not a lot of people out there that actually know what information security actually is. There's people that can talk about the industry and stuff like that, but there's specific, uh, a specific definition of what information security is. And according to ISACA, which is I-S-A-C-A, is an organization that uh, certified me as a certified information security manager. And their definition of information security refers to the processes and methodologies which are designed and implemented to protect print electronic, or other form of confidential, private, and sensitive information. Now, as project managers, that's all we deal with. In certain projects, to implement new technology or uh, a, a certain piece of software, or when you're dealing with intellectual property, as project managers, we're not thinking about how that data is protected. Uh, if for, let's say, an example, a project team member, computer happened to get a virus, or maybe was attacked of some kind, maybe hacked, that information can get out and it could be detrimental to the project. I mean, it could even end the project immediately because that, that information uh, got out. So it's very important as project managers that we take information security seriously because of that. So mm -hmm. at, at a high level, when you're dealing with projects, we have to be information security aware as project managers. Very good. Wow, man, that's pretty fascinating. Um, there's a lot more involved with that than I originally thought there would be. All right, so that sounds like it could be an entire education unto itself. But let me ask you, you know, are there any best practices or basic tips and tricks for project managers or, you know, for professionals uh, that they could keep in mind in relation to, you know, uh, making sure that they do the best they can to help protect uh, their information and, and work within the right governance? Yeah, it definitely is. To answer that question, I just want to just give a, a quick story to our listeners about something that I experienced throughout a project. So 12 years ago, I was asked to manage a software development project. And as you know, software dev development projects can be a handful. But in doing so, I had to gather requirements and develop a scope, estimate costs, obtain and manage the resources to complete the project deliverables. At that time, in all honesty, I felt it was my best work to date. Uh, everything that I, that I was able to accumulate was spot on, and every stakeholder in the project felt that, felt that, that the information that I was able to gather was great information to, to allow the continuance of the project and, and greenlighted it. A year later, the software was tested, modified, tested again, and then finally moved in the hands of the, of the operations team. And then the, the, uh, the stakeholders deemed it a success. But then what happened, everything went downhill in regards to the, uh, the project in itself. The code for the software was poorly written. 
uh, the software had backdoors, and in, in, in IT security speak, backdoors are used in security breaches to access the victim's computer network. So it was basically a total nightmare. The IT department didn't have enough resources to support the software and didn't maintain it properly. So there was a lot of, of different types of access to the system by people who didn't need it. And a lot of that information that was imported into to the system was exposed to to the uh, to the users of the network. It was just a, it was just a total nightmare. And at that time, I didn't know who, whose fault it was. Was it my fault? Was the IT department's fault? Was it the organizational leadership? I mean, in, in, in my eyes, I believe it was everybody's fault. Well, that's what it sounds like. Right, that's I mean, what it sounds like. Some of the things, some of the things I would ask you about is, like in terms of the defects and the poor quality. What was with the? Was there a rigorous quality team that was checking for defects when this stuff came out of development? Yeah, the, the, it, it was definitely a team involved in it. But at that time, people weren't privy to the security of the of their projects. So ultimately. It wasn't a consideration. It, 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 Maybe it wasn't enough of a, a a scope consideration. Exactly, but who, but whose fault was it? And I believe there was, you know, this is jokingly. I believe there was everybody else's fault. But ultimately, <laughs> at the end of the day, is the project manager's fault, right? right? The project the project manager is supposed to manage the risk of a project from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it's important. And make sure and make sure all the requirements, functional or non-functional requirements, including security, are part of the plan. Exactly. And that's why it's important to integrate information security practices into your projects from end to end. Very good. Very good, Felix. Thank you for that. That's a wonderful example. Well, that's exciting. Now, let me ask you this, Felix. Um, it sounds like a very intense and very complex industry, uh, this security niche that you're talking about. But I've always sort of looked at, you know, that whole that that whole world you described as maybe as a very, um, you know, a very privileged project manager role or very high paying. And I don't know if that's true or not. But tell me, you know, what are the salaries like for project managers in your industry? How hard is it to get in? Are there any are there any barriers to entry? What, should a project manager try to become a PM in the information security industry? Those are great questions. I mean, you see security in the news every day. From matter of fact, just recently, the city of Atlanta was was uh, was attacked by malware, and a lot of their systems were were shut down. So the the city government. Uh, didn't didn't know what to do other than work with their partners like Microsoft, the FBI, and those type of entities. So it's out there. I mean, information security is is a need. Right, but and if it's but but hold on, if it's out there, that's fine. If it's in the news, that's another thing. But is that translating into jobs? Yes, yes. Because there's a fear right now in, in which I was mentioning earlier about the protection of intellectual property, the protection of data, uh, and, and those type of, of things. We, the, the, the industry needs people that are technically savvy enough to protect that data. So there's a influx of jobs out there. In any job board you go to, if you put information security analysts, um, information security manager, uh, PMP with some type of security background, you see them all over the place in Indeed, on LinkedIn, and those type of job boards, you see them out there. All uh, right, so I'm, I'm PMP certified. I'm PMIACP certified. I have an MBA. If I went and got myself one of these information security uh, certifications, I'm sure there'd be requirements involved and you can't just go buy it. But if I had one of those, would that make me a really powerful candidate in that industry? Yes. Yes, because your project management knowledge includes different uh, criteria for, for, for managing risk for a project, for 
engaging your stakeholders. Those mm -hmm. are all part of IT security in general. Uh, yeah, that's what I to, keep hearing yeah. from you. I keep hearing from you is risk. I keep hearing from you communication. I keep hearing from you stakeholder engagement. Those sound like the top three knowledge areas. Yes, that's correct. That's what about correct. like, so So like, what about other like procurement or you know, you're not so much in those other, some of those other areas, but more around the risk and the communications and the stakeholders? Well, in, in some instances, you're going to need to, to really manage your procurements because in some in some organizations, the IT security team are going to be the ones who are buying specific selecting, hardware and software. Selecting right, the software. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's correct. That's cool, man. That's excellent. So, all right. Well, you know, uh, that's a, a lot for people to think of. And then so there but there are like sort of two major certifications, right? Yes. Can and, you give us and, can you give us a sentence on each one, the name of it and what it is? Yes, I mean in there's a uh an article out there from Global Knowledge of the 15 uh, highest paying certifications in IT. Mm -hmm. And PMP is one of them, but also the CISM which is a certified information security manager is is one of them and they, they pay over a hundred and twenty five thousand to a hundred and something thousand is, is in a high hundreds that and there's good. also another one yeah there's another one called uh the certified information security auditor uh that that is high up there too and there's another one that uh that involves being a certified uh, information risk specialist so that there there are a lot of certifications out there and they're very high paying. So what would be the one if you were breaking into the industry, what would be the one you would probably go with? The one that I have, which is the certified information security manager. Uh, th that's the one that gives you in, in, in relating it to P, uh, to a project manager is deals with governance. Like we were mentioning risk, engaging stakeholders. A lot of the things that you would, you would think about, as a project manager can relate in this certification. Well, that was an education right there unto itself. Thank you so much, Felix. You're welcome. And uh, that brings us up right to the end of my very first episode. That is great. All righty. Well, um, thank you so much, Felix. I, I really appreciated the kind words you said about uh, the training. And you certainly gave us a wealth of information on you know the whole information security industry uh as well as some great real life practice you know practical examples that was that was fantastic well thank dan thank you for for having me i hope that uh whoever's listening uh can take some of this information and apply it to to their own careers and their own work environments and just protect our data as project managers we need to be security conscious and we need to protect our, our, our valuable data Oh, yeah, I'm changing my password right after I hang up with you. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us today uh, with Felix Hernandez uh, as we went over the field of information security. Again, my very first episode at the Project Management Coaching Podcast.com. Uh, please come and, and sign up for the free podcast. And uh, thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you next time.